Yo, what's up guys? So today we're gonna check out how we can use OpenAI's API platform along with Node.js and Express to create our own GPT-3 slash ChatGPT powered REST API. For our example, we're gonna create an API endpoint which takes in a piece of code on one side and then returns to you the big O time complexity of that code. That said, you'll see that you can use these same tools to build all kinds of amazing stuff. It's really just up to your imagination. So feel free to divert from the path a bit and build whatever you think is cool. And without any further ado, let's just jump right into the code. To start, we will need three things. First, you'll need a copy of Node.js. If you don't already have this, head over to nodejs.org and simply download that onto your system. Secondly, you'll need an account on beta.openai.com. When you first create your account, you should get $18 of free credits to use over your first month, so you shouldn't need to add a credit card or anything like that. Once you've got an account, go to the top right corner of your screen, click on your account, then view API keys. Click on create new secret key, then copy this key to be used later in your project. Finally, you'll need an API client for interacting with your server. I'll use Postman, which is free, but feel free to use whichever one you would like. Now that we've got what we need, I've opened up my terminal and navigated to an empty folder where I want this project to live. Inside of this terminal, I'll run npm init-y to generate a blank package.json file. We'll need to add three normal dependencies, those being express.env and openai. Installing those should take a couple of seconds, but once you've done that, we can also install nodemon as a dev dependency using the dash D flag, just to make our lives a little bit easier. I'll open up our project using VS Code, inside of which we should just have our package.json file looking something like this. Or we'll place the default script with a dev script, which I want to call nodemon index.js. Running our server with nodemon will allow us to watch for our changes in our code and automatically restart our server if anything changes. In my files, I'll add a file for our API key called .env. Inside of it, we can paste our API key that we copied earlier. I'll call mine OpenAI key like this in all caps. Just make sure not to push this up to something like GitHub because this key is a private key. Back over in my files, we'll add a file called index.js. For this example, we'll just do everything in this one file, but feel free to break everything out and organize a little bit if you so wish. Up at the top of our file, we'll start by importing our dependencies. First, we'll import express by requiring express like this. Under this, we'll import .env, remembering to call the .config method on it so that our API key is loaded into the environment. Finally, we'll need two imports from OpenAI. The first is configuration, which is simply an object for defining things like our API key. And the second is OpenAI API. This object, once instantiated, will give us an easy interface for interacting with the OpenAI API and generating images and text based on prompts. Once everything is imported, we can start by making sure that we've got a server running. I'll create our server object by making a variable called app and setting it equal to express, then calling the function. Directly underneath, I'll call app.use, then inside of that, call express.json. This adds a piece of middleware, essentially code that will run on every request, which parses the body of the request into a JSON format. Next, I want to define a port for the server to run on. If one is available in the environment, we can use that, else I'll just use 5000. Finally, call app.listen to start our server, passing it the port as the first argument, then a function which console logs server started on port X, just so that we know it's working. With all this out of the way, we should now be able to run npm run dev in our terminal and see this message logged out, confirming our setup is working as expected. To get our endpoint up and running, we'll first need to set up OpenAI, create a variable called configuration, set this equal to a new configuration, and pass this an object with our API key. Remember that this object comes from OpenAI and the environment variable will only be present if you set up .env correctly. Under this, we'll create another variable called OpenAI and set this equal to the OpenAI API object, passing it our configuration. To start seeing this in action, we'll use our app variable to say that we want to listen for a post request. The first argument of this function is where we want to listen for the request. In my case, we'll say slash find complexity. The second argument we'll pass is the function that we actually want to run when the endpoint is hit. Because we want to call OpenAI, we'll want an async function taking in arguments for request and response. Inside of our function, we'll add a try catch block to make sure we catch any errors. And we can test that this is working by returning a response with a status code of 200 and just some JSON with the value of working. I'll call our API from Postman, sending a post request to localhost 5000 slash my complexity. And we should see that we get a response with our message. Now that we know our server is working, we can go ahead and start hitting OpenAI. I'll create a variable called response, setting it equal to the OpenAI object we created earlier. This object has several available functions, but the one we're going to want is create completion. Since the function is asynchronous, we're going to want to add an await to this function. There's a number of parameters that we can pass, but the ones that are most important are model and prompt. Model is a string of which OpenAI model we're actually going to want to use. There's a number of these with different pros and cons and different costs, which you can read about in their docs. But for this example, we're going to use text DaVinci 003. The prompt is the actual text that we want to pass for the API response. And we'll start by hard coding a JavaScript function for which we want to find the time complexity. My example is essentially a basic for loop over an array, which should give us an O of N time complexity. Under this, we'll ask the model to give us the time complexity of this function. I found from the docs that the results are more consistent when given a separator, so I'll add something like this as well. We'll need a couple of more values for the number of tokens that we want to use at most, as well as some others for how exactly we want the model to behave. 
Each of these is a bit out of scope of this video, but you can check out the docs here, as well as check out some examples like this one on OpenAI's website. I'll go down to our response and switch this to pass back a value of success true, as well as some data. The response from OpenAI will live on response.data.choices. For example, we only expect one choice, so choices at index zero, then dot text for the actual response. We can also catch any errors, returning the error response from OpenAI if one exists, else a generic response message. Running this again in Postman, we should see that we get a successful response with OpenAI informing us that the time complexity is O of N for this function. To wrap this up, we'll come back up to the top of our try catch and destructure a value of prompt from our request. We'll pass this value along with the request and it should contain the actual code that we want a response for. In our back text, we'll replace the hard-coded value with the prompt, then head back over to Postman. In Postman, I'll click on body, then raw JSON, We'll pass some JSON with the key of prompt, followed by the code we want to check. I'll pass some code which contains two nested loops, and OpenAI should now tell us that the code is O of n squared time, which is correct for this piece of code. To wrap up, I'll note again that there are many more examples like this one on OpenAI's website. I'll have a link to those in the description to check out more if you're interested. Beyond that, I hope you learned something. Smash the like button to help me help you prevent the AI overlords from taking our jobs. Until next time, peace.